All right, so you're you're at music school right now. You said like, how do you balance playing jazz versus what you actually want? So are you implying you want to play other stuff? By uh, the way, like there's no the there's mentality. no wrong answer here. This isn't me like putting you on the spot. Like you better play jazz. Like I, I don't care. <laughs> uh, it's it's all what you no, want. No. I mean, I guess that's everywhere in college is that in music college anyways is that majority they're really like into bebop and just like straight ahead jazz. Right. And uh, there's so much stuff to to discover and production wise other styles of music how is it going to serve me in the future what's the point in knowing how to blow over donna lee 300 bpm like <laughs> okay so let me ask you this question what is the end goal like how do you want to sound you know what i mean the end goal is to be the the guy who gets called for i don't know session studios studio sessions. like bebop Sorry. sessions it's groove groove stuff Cool. Groove based stuff. Pocket. Thanks for answering that question, by the way. I was needling you a little bit. First off, it's really good that you actually know the answer to that question, because most people don't. You know, a lot of us like a lot of different kinds of music, and then it's hard to decide. And there's this Japanese idea called Ikigai that I think about a lot. It loosely translates to your reason for being. But there's this book on it. Ikigai something something the journey through the whatever okay there's this venn diagram that i show everyone and whether or not this is in line with what the original meaning of ikigai means it's a fantastic venn diagram wow. oh yeah production value baby here we go boom all right so uh this is ikigai and there's four things you need to consider they're the things that we love okay we love music everyone in the world loves music but that that doesn't mean that music should be your reason for being necessarily because there's other things to consider uh there's also the things that you're good at now of course this can change over time you know, you can become good at something, you know. So I love that. That's the thing I love about the circle. You can change that. What you can be paid for, you know. This is really important because if you can't cover your hierarchy of needs, being a musician is not fun. You know, some, some people just like different qualities of life than others, you know. Some musicians really don't mind s scraping until they're like 70 or 80 and still scraping. You know, they don't mind. Some people, they really, it just wears them down. And by the time they're 30, they're like, I don't want to do this. I want to have like a family, you know, and I don't want to be like tripping about like, what happens if my parents get sick, you know, whatever. And they need to make money. That's something to think about. Then the fourth circle is what the world needs. I happen to think that the world needs music. I think music is proof that humanity is good and that musicians are ambassadors of goodness around the world. That's what I believe. At least they should be. So, and I think that's something the world needs. So music actually often is pretty compatible with ikigai except for the it's usually these two circles we got to be good at it and we got to work out a way to get paid for it that's the the big problem solving i think most of the time but actually on a more deeper level i would actually say that this top circle is the toughest one because there's yeah. this can grow and it's not just that you love music it's that you love music let me describe the difference there's love the feeling and there's love the action um there's a lot of people that enjoy music but they don't love it. They're not like give, I'm talking love like acts of service. Like they're not actually loving it. They're just enjoying mm -hmm. it. They're just trying to reap the benefits of it. That's not love. That's not a good relationship. Like if you want a good relationship with music, if you want music to love you, like there's some people that music, music just loves them more than, <laughs> than, than other people. Because if you perform acts of service for somebody, then that person's going to love you more. Same thing with music. If you if you perform acts of service for music more, it's gonna love you more. And there's some people where, dude, music loves the hell out of Anderson Pack because he has the amount of work he's put into music is just, in the words of Michael Scott, incalculable. There is also a certain level of enjoyment that you need to be feeling in order for you to do that. Like there are certain people that enjoy making music, enjoy working at it more than the rest of us, and those are the people that end up working harder. In every self-help book, whether it's Think and Grow Rich, right? That's a really common one. Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, The Compound Effect, Atomic Habits. All of them lead off with, it's about desire. It's like, whoever has the most desire is going to win. Like, whoever has the most desire and, and, and whoever has the most passion, the most love for it is, is going to do the most work. And that, by the way, can be cultivated. You can cultivate your love and desire for something as well. Like just thinking about it and studying it. Maybe it's history. Maybe I need to study the. For me, it was the history of music. Studying the history of jazz is what got me into it. When I started reading about the history of jazz, I was like, "Holy shit! These are the most interesting people that the uh, in the history of the world." And I want to be one of these people. I want to be one of those guys. And then the same thing happened when I went to Lowen Theory. That became interesting for me too. Anyways, that's on a macro level. Like, how do we cultivate our passion for music at large? But then on the micro level, getting 
of addressing your question of like, hey, how much bebop do I need to know? Okay. <laughs> when it comes down to choosing the style of music you want to get into, you should pick the one that you like the most. Straight up, like, cause, cause that's what, that's where your desire is going to be. And then that, that's where you're going to be able to sustainably work the hardest. Um, so for me, for, for a while it, it was jazz like that. I wanted to be a straight ahead dude. I wanted to play like Ray Brown trio type stuff. I wanted to play like Benny Green, you know, that, that fell by the wayside, but I, that's what I wanted. And I was working just so hard at it. And then when I got to be 23, 24, I realized that. I really liked making music in Ableton that used some of these things, doing stuff that's more influenced by mind design and knowledge with more pianism and melodicism and arrangement and like things I, I really like in that realm. That's why the end goal is so important. You got to know what the end picture is because that's where your desire is going to be. That's your reason for being. Then it's just a matter of figuring out how to get good at it and how to get paid for it. Now, how to get good at it. If it involves playing bebop lines, that might be part of it. Dude, what I would say is like the best way to come up with a style, because that's kind of where we're getting into now. It's coming to like, how, yeah. like what style, right? Like developing mm -hmm. a style is you should just play all your favorite shit put together. When it comes to playing in a style, there's like a few, few ideas that are really important. Number one, you want to play the stuff that you're good at. Again, Ikigai, right? You want to play the stuff that you're good at, stuff that like fits your hands. I, I think I've done a really good job to find stuff that works with my hands. I, when I was 24, 25, I had a ton of hand injuries. And I like couldn't really play very much. And so I just started playing like simpler and slower. And I was like, I don't care if I'm playing like 90 BPM, like 16th notes, who cares? Who cares if that's too slow? Mm -hmm. I don't give a fuck. But you know, I found something that works for my hands. I was good at, you know, a certain style of beat making and I just doubled down on it. And then also like the other thing about making a style, you want to be unique. Well, the way that you are unique, I think, is it takes two things. It's like number one, detail. No, no, you need to be detailed. If you want to be a unique player, you have to be detailed. Number two, having a combination of ideas that's that no one else has come up with. A detailed combination of sounds that hasn't been put, put together before. And the way you can do that, just play the stuff you like. Because you know what? Every single musician I've ever taught in the last few years, of which there's been about a thousand, all have a different set of tastes. It's crazy. I've never talked to this people who have the same, they list the same five, 10, 15 people. 